So for me, it's just knowing that the raw materials come from Africa and the end product is also coming from Africa, right? It's no longer a situation where you take the raw materials from Africa and then go and produce it somewhere and then bring it, right? No, it's just like the whole chain, along the whole value chain, everything is done in Africa. Welcome to the Built in Africa podcast, where we connect trailblazers of the African diaspora through the unifying language of tech. On this episode, we connect with Josiah Asin, CEO and co-founder of iSpace, an innovation and technology hub based in Accra, Ghana. Let's get into it. From what started as a co-working space for tech entrepreneurs, over the last eight years, iSpace has evolved into one of Ghana's leading tech hubs, providing everything from training for software developers to startup funding. To date, iSpace has supported over 3,400 startups. Listen as Josiah shares where the journey all started. I then set up iSpace, um, did the first event on mobile apps, um, so gave some money to a couple of other people, and then the conversation was, oh, um, what next, right? Um, rent is expensive. Um, investors are not in Ghana. Entrepreneurs yeah. don't know where to go, hang out, and all of those other stuff. So we decided to then set up a space, trying to cultivate mm-hmm. that whole um, ecosystem. So through that, just realized that, okay, entrepreneurs were not what, you know, I assumed they were. They were just coders or people with ideas they were not people with a structured thought process right um Mm -hmm. and some of them were just uh, mercenaries they were just getting involved in um, hackathons just to win money and then that's it so we Mm -hmm. then uh, realized that that business model is not working so then we migrated into having like a structured um, courses and we did that so in a nutshell that's how you know iSpace came about um I'm not really a technical person in the sense of coding or anything, but I'm the yeah. business behind tech in that sense. So um, I understand how it works, why you need it and all of those other stuff, but I'm not like the guy that will sit there and tell you, you know, Python, HTML. Recognizing the need for more women in tech, in 2016, iSpace launched Unlocking Women in Technology to empower women with the technical skills, business know-how, and funding. Since the program's launch, they've trained hundreds of women in Ghana and across other West African countries, and received the Google Diversity and Inclusion Award. Here, Josiah discusses the inspiration behind creating the program. When iSpace was functional, we um, were having a series. So we were the first people, which let's say I was one of the people that initiated women in tech, right? Um, mm, okay. Because the conversation was always around why don't we have enough women in technology, blah, 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 blah. So we were hosting events and I was thinking, okay, so who is really going to be responsible for bringing women in technology? Because women are not the problem, it's technology is the problem, right? And it's a cultural mm-hmm. thing. So you um, operate in an environment where it's about who has access to resources than anything else, right? And culturally, mm-hmm. it's always the guys. And when you looked at the space, it was always the guys that would come out and, you know, are taking uh, events and all of that. See, so I then decided, okay, why don't we set up a program that is solely dedicated to, or should I say for women, right? Um, okay. And it became like a nine month um, program. It's not the usual mm-hmm. two weeks, three weeks we train and go home type thing, right? Because mm-hmm. I broke it down from intermediate, well, beginner, intermediate, and then um, advanced. And the idea was we will wrap technology around what it is that you need to do, right? So the Unlocking Women in Technology came about because we didn't have a lot of women in um, tech, both from a technical okay. and a business side, right? That program was to solve that need. Listen as Josiah shares why it's important for men to advocate for women in tech. So as the men, we have to advocate for women coming into tech. And it doesn't take anything away from us. If anything, it adds 
what it is that we already have because it brings different creativity it brings different demographics and that's and it opens a new market to you in that sense to create change an entrepreneur's vision should be insightful bold and inspirational listen as josiah shares how he sees unlocking women in technology evolving over the next three to five years in our second year we realized that we were focusing on a crowd so we then partnered with um, a lot of the other regions about seven other regions for them to host mm -hmm. the program in their region so then that kind of mm -hmm. went very well then we stepped out outside of ghana we went to nigeria we went to kenya um so mm -hmm. for me i want unlocking women in technology to be a continental thing right um mm -hmm. so in about a year or two that's what the new strategy would be and from it being a continental thing in about two or three years i would love to see that program run in minority um, communities even whether it's dc or in new york wow. or whatever because mm -hmm. again we've got black um, communities that don't have access to a lot of these you know hubs a lot of this entrepreneurship yeah. thing and um i think it will make a great story to have an african program that is then migrated to you know to Europe yeah. and the US, yeah. whereas before is wow. the other way around, right? See, so that's the way I'm thinking. And I think I like that for the women that can code, now they they can build their own websites, they can tell their own stories. Some of them are doing video editing and all of those other stuff already. Mm -hmm. So they can also teach other people on the other end where it's no mm -hmm. longer the usual story where you know it's the diaspora teaching the continent yeah. anymore. Now it's going to be the continent mm -hmm. now helping the last Yes, that's how I want to say. I want to see unlocking women in technology move out of Africa and then go to like Europe that. and the US. So. Recognizing the power of collaboration, Josiah encourages members of the diaspora to get involved in Africa's tech ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Diaspora should find ways to tap into the movement that is happening in the continent at the moment, right? Both from a mm -hmm. cultural point of view, business point of view, musical and all those other stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Do not think that you need to be a millionaire to do something in Africa, right? Don't. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you have an idea, we can connect you with the right people and then build from there, right? So mm -hmm. even if you're in university right now and you have an idea, this is the best time to work on them. So um, from the diaspora, just connect with the continent. Um, there are talent here, um, people that would definitely welcome you and your vision and then kind yeah. of make it into um, reality. And that's it for this episode. If you haven't already, check out the full article on our website, builtinafrica.io, found in the description. And while you're there, subscribe to our newsletter so we may keep you up to date with the latest. But until then, keep building.